Hello everyone, thanks for joining. This is Michael Kuzatz from Duncan Aviation. Uh, this is our webinar on the Honeywell flight deck upgrades uh, for aging aircraft. And again, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be talking about, for the most part, laser ref upgrades and the DU-875 display upgrades for your aircraft. So we've got a lot of content to cover here. We're going to just jump right in and uh, talk about everybody who's in the room. Today we've got Ed Borger. Um, Ed, thanks for coming all the way out to Lincoln, Nebraska on a balmy, warm week. Yeah, thank you. And uh, you're so you're you're in technical sales. How long have you been doing that? I've been with Honeywell 32 years, which has gone very quickly. <laughs> so. you, what was your first job at Honeywell? Well, actually, I started in the in the defense side. Oh, did uh, you? But that was like watching grass grow. <laughs> So I got into the real uh, business aviation side about 30 years ago. So I've been doing it ever since. Wow. Was it technical sales the whole time? No. No, I've had various roles. Yeah. So OEM sales, okay. uh, area sales, uh, technical sales, product marketing. So, yeah, I've kind of run the gamut. What was the hot product when you first started? What was the first thing you were working on? Autopilot upgrades for KC-135. Oh, really? <laughs> That's a big autopilot. Yeah. You've got myself, Michael Kuzatz. Uh, I am the uh, Eastern Regional Avionics Sales Manager. And really what that means, on the east half of the United States, I work with the avionics facilities uh, for those guys, helping keep them full. Also in the room, we've got John Spellmeyer. John, thank you. Good morning, everybody. And uh, you're the western half. That's correct. So uh, you take care of everybody over there. And uh You've been in aviation for just a few years. About 40. Right, right. And uh, we've got B-52 time, B-1 time. You spent most of the time in those two yep. aircraft, right? And then the last 16 years in avionics. So okay. Was, how, long you, how long did you fly for the 16 airport? years. 16 years? So where we, what did you like? Okay, so inquiring minds, not many of us have flown B-52s and B-1s. What was your favorite? Oh, the B-1. Okay. Hands down. Boy, you, boy, that was easy. Okay, sounds good. So that's who you got in the room. Also, you've got a, uh, a section in there where you can ask questions, and I invite everybody, please, uh, if you think of anything, um, feel free to uh, ask a question. We'll be looking at them as we go through the webinar, and uh, towards the end or at the end of the webinar, we will go over all the questions uh, there. So feel free to uh, pipe up if you've got something there. Again, we're going to jump into the laser ref program. And uh, it's interesting because I had I sold a laser ref back in like 1997, and I had no idea what this apparatus uh, was or is. And uh, you've got an image there. It was the best image I could get of a, uh, a – that's not a laser ref. That is a, a ring laser gyro. And Ed wanted to make sure to tell everyone it is not a waffle maker. I thought it might look like a crock pot. Um, but what's really interesting about the technology is what it is, you basically shoot a beam into a ring, you split the beam, and it goes around in opposite directions and comes back to where it started. If the unit is not moving, the light beams show up at the same time. If the unit is basically accelerating or moving in a certain direction, the light beams come back or one comes back at a different time and you can measure acceleration. Am I roughly correct on that? Yes, end? you're very correct. Okay. And so roughly that's how it works. The crazy thing about this is like, who came up with this? George Senyak in, uh, out of France back in 1913 figured that out. How he did that I do not know. But now we've got these in our systems. And I was thinking like B-52, B-1, you had you had inertial nav, but they were iron gyres, weren't yeah, they? Correct. Big old spinning masses. Yep, and they drifted. <laughs> so. Yeah, and I, I mean, how many pounds of mass was spinning in that airplane? And so that really gets us into the beginning of the Laser Ref 2 and 3. Um, they've been around for a while. Ed, what was the, what was the beginning of these two systems? Yeah, so as the two and the three uh, imply, they were the second and third generation. So we started, Honeywell started with um, way back with laser nav. So the, the laser okay. picture you showed earlier was built around the navigator. And that's how Honeywell got into the business of navigation is, is developing the laser nav. Okay. That later became the laser ref, laser reference, as, as the navigation functions moved away from the laser product and into a flight management system. But the two and the three really came out in the late 80s, early 90s. So these have been around a while, um, 25 years, 30 years. 
Uh, and the purpose of what we'll talk about is the obsolescence that's looming with these. But uh, the Laser F2, it's a large box, 10 MCU form factor, very big. Uh, the three got a little smaller uh, as we improved the technology. And the threes went into the aircraft, the old Primus 1000, 2000 aircraft, like the Global Expresses, the G5s, platforms like that. So again, the, the two and three are, are newer generations than the originals, but they're old. They're yeah. 25 plus years now. And in the world of electronics, and we all know this, and we'll draw a reference to this over and over. I mean, none of us really have 25 year old electronics, you know, on our person, our phones obviously aren't that old. Our house doesn't have them. And it just gets so hard to maintain these older avionics systems just because you flat just don't have parts anymore. They're just, they're gone. Um, and I guess, like you said, that's the reason we're having this discussion is um, we've got to have a path for people with these systems to upgrade. And so of course it's a, it's an upgrade to the laser ref four system. And I think that's, it's kind of the scary part is like, okay, you got to do a big upgrade. This isn't, I mean, a lot of people weren't doing upgrades to this. Now it's kind of being forced to, to do it. And, you know, it's the question is how hard is it to do this? Is it a plug and play? Can I just take one out and throw the next one in? Yeah. So that's a, that's a good point about this upgrade. You, you, the slide mentions ease of installation. So it's not truly a plug and play. You don't just unhook the laser F2 and plug in a laser F4. Uh, but it is very easy. It's, it's, um, if you have a laser F2, which is, as I said, a 10, 10, 10 MCU form factor, we've got this tray that shows right here on the right that you can put the tray in and put your new laser F4 into the tray, into the same form factor you had in the airplane prior. And then with just some wiring, some, some repinning of the connector, um, you've got an installed laser F4. Okay. Um, it's pretty easy. It's not nearly as invasive as, you know, where you're running new wire bundles, uh, punching holes in aircraft. It's, it's really designed to accommodate a very easy path to do this. Okay. That makes sense. And, and then obviously, and, and John, you've worked with several of the, the satellite shops working on this. And how many days down have you seen these guys? Or usually well, down? if uh, any of our satellite shops could do this, right? It's usually a two-day installation. Okay, so it's not a. It's yeah. So to, to Ed's point, we're really not just rewiring a whole airplane. It's a nice, easy upgrade to do that. You know, it's just popped into my head here. I mean, some of these. What's we've got aircraft with two systems. Some have three systems. What's more common that you've seen out there? Yeah, these the laser ref really found their way onto the longer haul business jets. Uh, and in that case, like the Gulfstream 4, the, the 5, the Global Express, those are mostly triple installations. Okay. Uh, the smaller, more mid-range, you'll see like a Citation 10, you'll see two. Okay. Uh, they, those don't cross the air, ocean. The three are really the longer haul airplanes. So triple is more common in the larger airframes. The more mid-size will have it. Well, you'll find dual installations. And so we didn't talk about this a lot, but if say you've got three laser ref twos and you just want to replace one with a laser ref four, mm -hmm. how is that advisable? Should they change them all to laser ref four or can you, can you mix and match those? Yes, you can absolutely mix and match. So okay. the, the STCs, the AML STCs that are out there allow uh, mix and match. Um, and, and the laser ref fours are configurable so that they can be in, integrated with an old two or three. Okay. Um, so no, you can't. Okay, that's good to know um, because sometimes it might be a big, uh, big job to take all three on. So of course, a lot of people are like, okay, what does it take to upgrade these? And the, the nice thing is, is you guys have done some special pricing for 2019. So one unit, one laser ref unit's right around 170,000. But here's the big thing: is is the trade-in credit is fifty-two thousand five hundred dollars. Um, and did I get that? I'm out, right? That's correct. Yes. Yes. And I'm going to guess this probably won't last forever. Um, we were t at first, I think John and I, we were thinking earlier in the year that it would end this year, but that's not the case. Correct. Yes. So we're coming out with our 2020 bulletins and okay. yeah, we are planning to hold the credit, the 525 for operators okay. on their old twos and threes through 2020. Um, Good. At the end of 2020, Watch out! It's it's we're probably not going to be able to hold that any longer. Okay, so, so we will do this through 2020. So really, they they get through 2020 to get into the budgeting and figure out what they right. want to do, and to be sure to obviously take advantage of this trade-in credit because again, most aircraft have at least two of these systems in, so you're saving well over a hundred thousand dollars. 
taking advantage of this. So really, it's your final price is right around 120,000, which is a huge discount if you take advantage of it um, going into this year or into 2020. Um, of course, some of the benefits uh, of this is obviously the larger discount um, coming into uh, this year and into 2020. I think the big thing is, is planned downtime. And John, that's kind of what you've seen some of these guys. It's, it's really, it's the downtime that they're, they, they want to do this. <laughs> they want to control the experience. Yeah. But if you plan ahead, it's just a couple of days down. Yeah. And I think that's the big thing is not to get caught uh, out in the field. Um, and the big thing is full support moving forward. Um, we really just want to be able to, again, the two and the three are running out of parts. And with the four, you guys obviously have plenty of repair capability and you can support this as far as you can tell uh, for quite the long time. Um, and so as we move forward through the obsolescence of this, of this product, I mean, there, there are some options as far as upgrading. The HAP coverage has changed its name to MSP Avionics coverage, correct? Yes, yes, that is a new name. We're all getting used to the, the new name, but there yeah, you go. it was HAP. Okay, um, and so briefly, what are the options for these guys? If they, wanna, if they don't wanna do the upgrade now, like, hey, can we just do the upgrade? or the HAP, I'm not sorry, the uh, MSP avionics coverage. What are the options there? Yeah, so first we do want to encourage people to start planning for this early. Uh, and that's why we're giving this transition in throughout the next year with the, with the better pricing and to encourage upgrades, to encourage getting all the laser ref twos and threes off of those airplanes. Uh, as we work through the transition, um, we'll still be looking at trying to repair next year to keep uh, AOGs from getting bigger and, and piling up. But one of the big things uh, that we are offering here is, is what we talked about, the MSP coverage. So this, if, you, if you're not going to replace all your laser refs at once or, or do them proactively, you can go on a plan on, on our MSP extended coverage that will allow you to um, replace a laser ref two or three upon failure uh, with a new four. Okay. Uh, and there's three, I think three options here as you scroll through. Um, so yeah, it, as, as we said earlier, some aircraft have three of these uh, units on board. So what the, the third unit option there is showing is if you have a failure of one, you get three laser ref fours to replace at that price per hour. If you just want to do one, when you have a failure of a laser F2, you can replace it with a four upon failure under this plan. Okay. Um, so yeah, you can either do one or all three at, upon a single failure, depending on the plan you're on. Okay, makes sense. Um, for the most part, that's everything on the laser ref. We do have a bunch of questions coming in on this, and I just thank you everybody for bringing those questions in. We're gonna talk about the DU-875 upgrade here quickly. Um, and we will come back to all these questions. So uh, don't fear, we will get back to you on there. So we're gonna jump into the, the DU-875 upgrade. And again, for people who have questions on there, keep, uh, keep, keep them coming, we'll get to them. And uh, Ed, we've got kind of a nice looking cockpit here. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to uh, <laughs> throw out a trivia question to all you uh, avionics uh, aircraft buffs. Um, what is the cockpit you're looking at here? And I'll, I'll give you a hint. It's it's a Honeywell cockpit, <laughs> but we're going to take some take your question uh, and uh, or take your take your answer uh, on the text. So if you want to text in, so text in the first one yeah. to text in the correct answer. Eric, who's running the everything behind the scenes here, he's going to keep uh, keep track of that, and we will offer a. We we made the decision a whopping ten minutes ago. A nice bag of uh, Duncan gear. Uh, whoever gets that question correct. And uh, we'll jump into the big reason why we're uh, upgrading from the DU-870 to the DU-875. And I think that image portrays the everything there. And uh, so, Ed, I mean, the same thing with the DU-875. It's a CRT technology, uh, much like this TV here. Correct. Yeah, yeah. So the analogy we use is um, these aircraft uh, were manufactured in the in the '90s with CRTs. That's the old DU-870 CRT, just like this old television here. And the analogy we like to make uh, when we talk to a customer about the airplane and updating his 
tubes to screens is you don't watch TV on your how in your home any longer with these old <laughs> 1980s TVs. In fact, you can't buy them anymore. You can't get them repaired anymore. And I think the same right. analogy is is taking place in the cockpits today. All the new airplanes are being uh, come off the assembly line with CR or <laughs> we are with LCD technology. Right. And with that, you've got a lot more capability, uh, higher reliability, um, and just a, a, the, the latest technology. So that's what we're doing: is saying no, don't don't keep your CRT in your airplane any longer because you can't get it repaired. You can't correct. Uh, you can't get all the new features. And kind of like the laser ref, what's the on the, the history on the DU-870, when did that come out? I mean, what were the first aircraft? I mean, that was pretty good technology at the time. When was that? Yeah, so it's very similar to the laser ref 23 When the laser ref 23s were going in, yeah, the old DU-870s were going in, and they were state-of-the-art at the time. Uh, LCDs hadn't been perfected. They were not making their way onto aircraft. So they're about the same age. The 870s oh, you're really? going to find are about 20 to 25 years old. Um, maybe 15 if it was the tail end of the production of the airplane. So for the really young people on this webinar and they're looking at that TV and they see those really big dials on the front, this is a TV that does not have a remote control. And uh, for, I think for most of us as we were kids, we were our father's remote control, which meant we had to get up from anywhere in the house and turn the dials for our parents because that's how that was done. So, um, so the big thing is, is now you want to put in a new DU-875. And I think one of the amazing things is it's a drop-in replacement, if I'm correct. Uh, one for one is kind of as you guys call it, correct? Yeah, so you will, as you as the slide builds, you'll see there's options. I think that's the key here is we're, we're providing the operator that has these old CRTs options. It's It used to be an all or nothing purchase, meaning if you had five displays on your aircraft, if you're a Falcon, operator, Falcon 900, you had to do all five at once, which is an expensive proposition. Now we offer the one for one uh, because this is a plug and play technology. Uh, you actually very simply unplug the old C uh, CRT and within minutes you can you plug in the new LCD and it brings up everything the way it looked on the CRT. And in the avionics world, I mean, that term plug and play has been overused. And a lot of times, yeah, you can plug it in but hey, we've got two days of software we need to load for you. Uh, and there's some changes here. And then, so truly you're, I mean, you put this in and as far as I'm a pilot, when that comes back up, everything looks the same. Everything's where I, I, it was before. Yes, absolutely. Um, it, it's, it's simply a plug and play. And yeah, we have abused that term. Uh, <laughs> but in this case, it was designed that way from the ground up is to be able to unplug the CRT, plug in the DU 875 LCD, and it brings up the exact same symbology and it looks the exact same to the pilot. Of course, with that, you don't get all the new functions and features that we're going to talk about. Right. But it is a it is your first line option to. But to it's get yeah, the it's a starting point. Yeah. And I guess and maybe and we'll bring this up. But so say in you know you got multiple displays. Say one goes bad. I don't have so just to reiterate. I can just replace the one and leave all the old CRTs. If I want. Yes, the STCs have been designed to, to accommodate mix and match. Okay. Uh, and they're certified that way. So, yes, you can. Now, there are pilots will notice a difference. When you put an LCD next to an old CRT, you will the pilot will see. Oh, that's true. That, that CRT doesn't look <laughs> quite as good. Uh, there's also brightness issues. Uh, but it has been certified. It, it, is, a, it is a nice uh, lower cost way to start replacing the CRTs with LCDs. Yeah. Um, okay. Sounds good. So again, as you were talking about, there is an upgrade path. And so now we have the enhanced features. So how does that work? How does someone get those features? Yeah, so this goes back to what I was saying earlier is, is we've been selling the enhanced features, what we call Primus Elite enhanced features for about five, six years now. And this is the all or nothing. So when, okay. you, when you go to the full enhanced features, you do need to consider that you'll be replacing all your s tubes with screens okay. in the cockpit. Understood. And then we have the... Uh, the final upgrade path here is to the synthetic vision, correct? Yes, yes. And so can everybody get this or is this, I mean, how does this, do I have any extra parts I need to do to do this to get the synthetic vision? So let me back up. So the second bullet, uh, yeah. yeah, when you add the enhanced features, um, you are, as I said earlier, replacing all your screens or all your tubes with screens, but you're also adding a few hardware pieces. You, okay. you add a data loader, uh, for, for the charts and you add um, the trays and you add a cursor device. 
So that's what the Primus Lead Enhanced uh, features. I gotcha. So once you have that, once that is all installed, then you can move to the Advanced Features, which is mostly a software upgrade to give you that nice, pretty picture you see there with the synthetic vision. Okay. That's what we call Primus Lead Advanced Features. That's, yeah. and I got this slide here to really side by side to see the differences, which is, it's, it's hard to believe that this is the same display. Yeah, it's dramatic. It is, and we like this image. So on the on the left there is what, for example, we'll just say a Global Express was certified back in 1995 or 1998, whenever it was certified. That symbology set was was really a, a nice uh, upgrade to what over electromechanical looked like. Right today, <laughs> yeah. You look on the left, or you look on the right, excuse me, at the synthetic picture, and it's dramatic. It's huge, and and we're giving this capability now to these older airplanes. And what's interesting is just as we were talking earlier, where, you know, this new technology and, you know, we do have a lot of the, the more seasoned pilots, you know, when you come out with a lot of new technology, they're like, eh, I don't need all that new stuff. But as kind of your experience, when you see these guys come into synthetic vision, what are their, what's their response? Yeah. So, yeah, we, we mentioned this before the call. Um, <laughs> when we came out with synthetic vision a number of years ago, we took it to the market. We started demonstrating it to the, to the pilots. We took our own Honeywell airplane out and, and flew pilots around and we'd take them in the simulator. And once you put this in front of a pilot, um, they don't want to have it removed. Um, I mean, it's, it's very intuitive, uh, especially when you're coming into a, a, a night approach, right. an unfamiliar airport, mountainous terrain. Um, it doesn't take, I mean, even the old pilot's going to appreciate that, that huge Absolutely. situational awareness that's, that's given. And I think that's the thing of, and all this is the situational awareness that you give on this. And we've got some other images for this, but I definitely talk about the, the matrix here because a lot of people are like, Hey, what about my airplane? Can I get all that? And so we do have some options here and we have the solid green dot, which means all the, these aircraft can get all the features, correct? Yeah. So we talked about the, the ways to upgrade and that's on the left there. So you can do an exchange just like on the laser ref. You can, you can actually exchange an 870 for an 875 if you're on the plan. Uh, those those plans are available across the board, meaning showing the green. Uh, the one for one, if you want to just plug and play one at a time, yeah, there's certifications there in the green showing available. And then the enhanced features, the PEEF enhanced features, yeah, most of those aircraft, we're still working through one. That's the open circle under the 550, 560 citations. Uh, that's in work. So they'll have that capability as well for the enhanced features. Uh, the advanced features with the synthetic picture, we're still working on a couple of certs there. You see the Citation 10, the Lear. But other than that, yeah, the green green is good. Green, <laughs> and, and those certs have all come in in the last few years. So we're, we're able to service pretty much the whole market of Primus 1,000, 2,000 aircraft that were manufactured. And what's the timing, do you think, on the, the open dot ones to get those done? Yeah, those are next year. Okay. So both the 10 and the Lear 45 uh, advanced features will be next year, uh, probably mid-year. Do you have a a ballpark, I don't know if you know this answer at all, is how many people have done this upgrade? Oh, yeah. We track it very closely. Okay. Um, so, yeah, for example, the Falcon 900 EXC, Deso just informed us uh, of the 140 that they have fielded flying, half have done the upgrade. Half? Yeah. And that's a, that's probably the highest penetration rate. Uh, the Global is running a little lower than that. The Citation 10 may be um, about 60 out of the 300 have done it. Okay. So I guess the point is, yeah, there's still there's still opportunity for these operators to do something with that with the aircraft, whether it's a one for one right. or a full full upgrade. That makes sense, and obviously some of the same reasons to upgrade. And here, of course, the benefits, the increased reliability. And we were talking before the reliability between a CRT display and an LCD display. Obviously, you guys have seen the difference in the repairs, mm -hmm. how much more, it's hard to quantify that, but how much more reliable is an LCD display than that CRT? Yeah, we, we advertise and have found through just engineering, uh, our engineering process, it's about a 2X. Okay. So uh, the CRTs in their mature form, which they were back in the 90s, had pretty high reliability for their day. Right. About 2,000 hours was about the, the forecast rate. And if you look at the actuals, they were probably living up to that or exceeding it. Now they're not. Right. Uh, the LCD comes along, there's fewer parts, uh, higher reliability. Um, and that, so it's about a 2x improvement. So you're seeing about a 4,000 project, projected uh, MTBF on those. I probably don't know the answer to this, but if I've got a CRT that's never been out, how much, how much more life do you think some of those have? Can they make it another five years, 10 years? <laughs> yeah, yeah, tough question. Um, okay. 
they are failing at a higher rate. We're seeing the burn in becoming more significant. Right. Um, they're, just, said, yeah. they're, they're degrading. If they haven't failed, they are certainly degrading. And it's the glow. You said just they've got that kind of ominous. Well, it blooms a bit. So, yeah, yeah it, it, our, at our show last uh, last month in Las Vegas at MBAA, we had a, a CRT sitting next to an LCD in, in our booth. Yeah. On these two. And it was pretty dramatic. Um, the 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 CRT was functioning normally. Right. It was, it was not considered uh, failed, and yet, um, you know, you could definitely yeah. see the difference between uh, between the two. So it's not only are you setting up for less repairs in the future, but you're getting a better looking display on the pilot's eyes. Absolutely. Um, and I think the big thing is obviously a new warranty, so you get new parts, a new year one year warranty, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, that's the big one, uh, the lower MSP avionics cost. So if, if you do this upgrade, you get the first year's free and then $10,000 off for the following two years, correct? Yeah, so that's an incentive we're providing, uh, just like we're providing trade-ins, uh, trade-in credits. We've, we've got an incentive if they do the entire cockpit with the Primus Elite Enhanced features, in other words, replace all your displays, put in all the, the cursor device, the data loader, and, and give the full capability. We are offering as an incentive to give you that first year of MSP avionics coverage at no charge. And that's Jeez. that's beyond just the displays. You're, right. you're protecting all the Honeywell equipment on the airplane okay. under that's, this plan. So it's, it's, it is a huge cost savings. Uh, yeah. Um, and obviously, I mean, the situational awareness, we talked that with, about that with synthetic vision. Um, and you can see that with the image there. But you've also got the approach plate. That's geo reference. So you've got the position of the aircraft mm -hmm. on there. Uh, this is another image because uh, you get XM weather, which we didn't have before. And I think for the biggest thing, well, and also you've got the uh, uh, airport diagram and you can see where you're at on that. But a lot of pilots sit there and go, I don't need all this in my avionics. I've got my iPad for that. And I mean, for those pilots, I mean, what's what's the argument there? I mean, yeah. iPad's nice and cheap and it's an easy way to go, right? Yeah, yeah, so you bring up a really good point, um, the iPad and the cockpit. Um, so some of these pictures you're seeing here in the previous slide uh, are showing the capability of Primus Elite. Uh, you having the geo-reference position, the airport diagram, the taxiways, things that they didn't have on their CRTs before. Uh, and as a result, the, the iPad has found its way into the cockpit because the iPad can show yeah, jet charts, the iPad can do XM weather. But what we've seen as pilots do that, they'll have, some, in some cases, two iPads in the cockpit, one for the weather picture and one for the chart. And they're, and they're also looking down at their, at their primary flight displays to fly the airplane in, in the various flight regimes, and it becomes very cumbersome. Um, so what our, 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 our uh, point is, is you'll never get the iPad out of the cockpit. We're not saying get rid of your iPad because there's always going to be a use for the iPad for flight planning or for FBO information or fuel prices, things like that. But don't use it to fly the airplane. I think what we're saying is right. reduce your dependence on that iPad as you as you transition through the flight regimes yeah. from approach to, um, to landing or from uh, takeoff to en route. Don't depend on the iPad for that. Use the, the aircraft the way it's now capable of. Right. And that's, and it's, again, it's clutter free. I mean, the cockpit management is so much easier mm -hmm. having it where you need it. And I think the other big benefit is that $35,000 trade in credit. Uh, and again, we talked about this with laser ref. Um, this isn't going to probably go on forever, correct? Right, right. So we've had a trade-in credit going now for a few years. Uh, we lowered it last year. We're going to continue the $35,000 credit per DU870 when you turn it in through 2020. Okay. But uh, at the end of 2020, yeah, when the support ends, uh, the trade-in credit is probably going to end as well. So okay. I wouldn't count on the trade-in credit living much past 2020. And then I thought the same thing with uh, the MSP avionics coverage too. That probably won't go on. I mean, that sweet deal of uh, a year free and right. So that all just kind of, so if they don't do this upgrade here and that's, I mean, that's kind of the, on all of these systems here. Um, say we get into, you know, end of 2020, these guys say, no, I'm not, I'm just going to, Ride, ride the horse as it is. I'm not going to upgrade. I'm not going to do an MSP upgrade. I'm just going to take my chances. I'm going to go barreling into 2021. What happens? Yeah. What happens if they have a failure either on the laser ref or on a DU-870? Yeah, it, it's it's going to present problems. Um, 
So we're trying to help with the transition to that that point. But your options, the operator's options are going to get very narrow at that point as okay. to what they're going to be able to do unless they want to spend a lot of money. So we're, we're, yeah, we're working through the transition of obsolescence. We're trying to say, do it now. Here's some incentives, uh, such as the, the MSP coverage yeah. and the trade-in discounts. But yeah, we can't run those forever. Um, so we're trying to provide this window of transition. Uh, but yeah, after 2020, um, yeah, it's either going to become very expensive or you're going to have an AOG situation. And it'll be down for, I mean, it'll yeah. be down for a while. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and obviously with these type of aircraft, it's, it's the whole point you have the aircraft is to, to be able to move around as you need. And again, so uh, increased reliability, new warranty, the lower uh, MSP avionics program costs, situational awareness, and of course the uh, the trade-in credit. Um, again, we, we're back to the image of the aircraft. Eric, do we have a winner? We do. We do? Who got it? It is Thomas Pompa. Thomas Pompa. Do we have his email? I will get it to you. Well, no, I just want to make sure you have it so we can. All right, Thomas, good job. I think I saw some cheaters in there, some Duncan people trying to throw in. Another. Yeah, we, we always used to say, uh, yeah, employees <laughs> excluded from participating. But yeah, that is a that is a Lear 45, a Lear 4045 cockpit. Um, it's a very nice looking cockpit when you put in those, those pictures there with the, the new Primus Elite capability, but that is a four screen system in uh, in the Lear that we certified. Okay, yeah, looks really good. Um, also the, the benefits on the Laser Ref program, the trade-in credit, take advantage of that now. Again, as with all of this, plan downtime so you're not caught out on the road with a unit breaking, um, and obviously full support moving forward with a Laser Ref 4. Um, just quickly, a little bit, one slide on Duncan Aviation. One of the reasons uh, to use Duncan for these upgrades is you can see here, now this this chart, it's got a few extra dots on it, but the uh, the black ones and the uh, kind of the blue gray are all our avionics facilities throughout the country. And what's nice about it, if you wanna do an upgrade like this close to home, more than likely you have an avionics facility, a Duncan avionics facility, close to where you're at. But more importantly, if you're flying around the country and you need help, again, there's more than likely there's going to be a facility close to you that can help you. Um, and if you're also thinking, okay, I got to do one of these upgrades or both of these upgrades sometime in 2020, maybe you don't want to do it standalone. Maybe you want to do it tied in with a big maintenance event or engines. Um, you'll see the larger black dots there. Uh, Battle Creek in Michigan, Lincoln, Nebraska has got a facility in Provo, Utah. You can combine these with some uh, larger maintenance. So if you're really interested in doing this, which obviously we hopefully we've given you a good reason why to look at this in 2020, uh, feel free to email myself, Michael Kuzats. You've got my email right there. And uh, John Spellmeyer, his email is there as well. Um, and just send us a quick email and we can send you some budgetary numbers. Uh, to give you an idea of what you're looking at and uh, to get you upgraded. So the next slide is technically the question slide. I don't even know where to start. I'm going to admit to all of you, we have a lot of questions. We may not get to all of them, uh, but we were going to do our best. Um, and uh, Ed, you're taking a peek at a few of these. If you want to just grab some of on one of the ones that you see there, um, and a lot of questions on the cost, a full cost from a two to a four. It depends on the aircraft, how many you have. Again, send John or I an email if you're interested. And, and Gary, I see your uh, note there. We can get you some pricing on that if you need. Yeah, yeah. And I see I see some laser questions here. Uh, what if you have a laser F3? So just a little more detailed. So, yeah, we mentioned the, the laser F2 and laser F3 are what we're replacing, and they are different form factors. Uh, there's also different part numbers you'll need to replace. So if you have a laser ref 2, uh, which had what we called our ASCB A and B interface, those of you that remember ASCB, that goes back a few years, uh, you need a GD15 uh, replacement. And if you have the laser ref uh, 3 on the aircraft, that's either a, a GD03 or a GD40, depending on which was, uh, which you're, what, what capability you're replacing. Um, but yeah, we have replacements for both the two and the three, um, and the various partners. 
of the four that decide that. Um, so I saw one other question there too. Uh, are they essentially the same reference to the equipment? Um, yeah, so again, the, the software in the four is, is pinnable uh, based on the MAGVAR model. So depending on, again, what you're replacing uh, will determine which part number and what capability the laser ref four will be enabled with. Um, so there is a solution for any two and three aircraft out there. The sales bulletin and also our service information letter does a pretty good job showing what part numbers of laser ref two there are out there. Basically, right. it's the HG 1075 series that gets replaced with a, a three or a three or a, excuse me, a, a 15. And then it gets, it gets confusing, but yes, yeah, suffice to say there are, there are uh, part numbers okay. of conversion that exists for all of them. Krishna, who holds the STC for this, for the globals? Now, is that for the Primus Elite, I think? I that, think that came during the... Yeah, uh, so, so Bombardier has STCs for the full the full Primus Elite enhanced features. Okay. If you're doing one-for-ones, uh, there's other Honeywell dealers that have got STCs, and they're in the sales bulletin. Okay. So rather than go through them all, uh, we do have those green dot. If you go back to that green dot. I think dot this matrix. one's talking about the laser ref. I think this is a question okay. early on on a laser ref. As far as the STCs and the approvals to do yeah. that. Okay. So that's actually a little simpler. So on the laser ref two to threes for non Gulf streams, uh, Dassault Falcon jet has the STC. Right. It's, it's shareable within the network. And so if you, you don't have to go to Dassault, it's just, right. they happen to be the STC applicant and, and um, they, they hold it, but it's, 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 available to any anywhere you take your airplane, providing it's a Honeywell right. authorized. <clears throat> yep. Nathan, you had a question kind of, and I think he felt like he was being forced to make a decision here before the end of the day, and you don't. You have through 2020 to do these upgrades and to maintain this pricing. Um, so I think kind of early on, I think there was some feeling like, hey, you better, by the end of 2019, you better get this done, and it's not. You guys have given everybody really a little over a year. Well, on the trading credits, yeah. Correct, yeah. correct, on that. Um, let's see if we've got some people on the, we talked about the, the DU 875s. I'm not sure on that one. Yeah. That doesn't look like a question. Okay. Um, there was another one here, um, kind of for you, John. Has Duncan Aviation done any of these upgrades? And I know you talked about a little bit on the Laser F. We've done some in Teterboro and yep. Centennial, but yep. DU-875s. We just did one last month in okay. at Denver Centennial. Okay. We're, so we're in the process of doing a Laser F4 upgrade. Okay. Yeah. Right so now. We're, yeah, we're cranking through those here at Duncan as well. Any other questions you see there that we need to hit? Well, here's one, um, and I, I'm not sure I have the best answer, but it says John Williams wrote, any incentive for the PEAF upgrades if you already have the DU-875? Oh, fair so point. Me, meaning you have PEF. So, yeah. <clears throat> so, I guess what that implies is, yeah, we're offering um, trade-in credits and, and, and uh, also um, uh, MSP credits or MSP incentives to get to the, the, the Primus Elite Enhanced Features. But if you already have the that, uh, is there an incentive to get to the PEAF? Uh, right now, no. It, it's a fairly easy upgrade. Um, you basically just software convert your displays, and you can do that on wing. Um, and it's it's a one-time charge. Uh, but there's no ad incentives in our bulletin to do that okay. right now. As we've just rolled it out, most of those certs are just coming available, so we're just starting to sell. But okay. it's not a it's not a really expensive upgrade compared to once you've got the displays. Right. I mean, the big the big upgrade expense is getting all your old CRTs out and getting the displays in. Once you have that real estate, um, the the advanced features is is not quite as painful. Okay. Well, Christian's question there does that make sense? The linking option for the Learjet. Yes. So yeah, there. The Learjet is, is unique, and I'll, I'll make that clear here. Um, all the aircraft that we put Primus Elite on uh, is the P-1000, P-2000 aircraft, uh, had a Honeywell FMS. Oh, okay. and, and those Lear operators that, um, that are familiar with that airplane uh, know that, that all those Lears have a universal FMS. So there are there's some slight differences. Okay. You okay. still do have the chart linking. So absolutely, you do get the aircraft's position on the, on the chart for either aircraft airport diagrams or for uh, approach plates 
Uh, the one the one limitation that you do notice on the Lear that you may not have on a Global Express or a Falcon is the in route or excuse me the destination and the destination chart just doesn't automatically populate. Oh, you have to okay. a actually go in and to your destination and bring that chart up when when the time is right. It doesn't just auto retrieve that chart for right. you like it would because the FMS is not sending us that information like it does with the Honeywell FMS. So that's a slight nuance on the okay, layer. Makes sense. But they do get the aircraft position on the on the chart on the display. Okay. And uh, we have a an interesting question from a Gary Harpster. I believe he's out of <laughs> out of somewhere in Nebraska. He's retired. I know. He can't, but he, he has a good question, so we gotta hit it. Any cr increased capability for the laser F four as far as the RNP values. Yeah, so that, that brings up a good point. Uh, the the laser ref upgrade, uh, as we are providing it to the to the market, is really about obsolescence. It's an obsolescence issue. Okay. It does not, and Gary brings it up right here very clearly. It, <laughs> it does not give you any added operational capability. Um, the so yeah, uh, better R and P. Uh, Better landing minima? No. Okay. No. Okay. It's, it's really about uh, just replacing and having a higher reliability. You know, you're you're getting weight increase. You're mm -hmm. getting a weight savings. You're getting uh, higher reliability, lower cost of operation, but no real operational benefit. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. Um, and I think finally on this one, I'm not sure there's a really easy way to answer that. Um, Ken's on just fours in stock. For I mean, you've got enough fours of stock to, to fund this whole program and plus some. Yes, it, it's, it's, a, it's a valid question because uh, sometimes our parts do have long lead. What we've done with the Laser F4 program uh, for these aircraft is we have a distributor we're working with. Okay. So we have, we have, Honeywell has parts, we have Laser Fs that we stock just like we would any other thing, but we, but to manage the, the high demand that we anticipate, we have a, we have a distributor partner. Okay. That is, and there's, for the, the dealers that are doing the upgrade, there's very explicit instructions how to order those from our distributor. And they, they have purchased and they're holding inventory. That's the value of having a distributor partner yeah. is they hold the inventory. They bear the expense to hold all that inventory so that there is no lead time. Nice. There's not a lead time. That's, so, that's very yeah, so we've important. anticipated this. Um, good. We've got a lot more questions here. Some of them deserve some one-on-one -on -one time, especially pricing and everything. And uh, myself and John will get back to all of you on these as far as pricing goes. Uh, we'll be able to take care of you there. We just don't want to keep everybody too long um, on it. Again, thanks for tuning in. Um, wait, wait, I've got one, one other oh, question. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just saw this because this is a valid question. Shoot. Jeff Simons wrote, can you upgrade the software there you go. for the GDO3 to go to GD40? Absolutely. Uh, it's not in our sales bulletin, but there is a service bulletin that allows the conversion of a 3 to a 40. Uh, okay. Uh, the 40 was just a newer software version uh, when we had the 3. Uh, we see demand in this upgrade program for both the 3s and the 40s, okay. depending on what what aircraft. Um, for example, the, the Gulf, Gulfstream likes on the G5 to use GD3s because that's okay. what they put on the production. Makes sense. Uh, the 40 is a newer a newer software. It cleans some things up. It has a higher, a better, more adjusted MAGVAR model in it. But we can convert those. Uh, if you want to send them in, we don't have a rotable pool, but they can be sent in and done under a service bulletin. It, it, it just costs. Really. How long does that take usually to do that? Gosh, I wouldn't want to speculate, but I would imagine 15 days to 30 okay. days if you if you really need to do it. Yeah. Um, again, it's it's not something that's in our sales bulletin, but it is, it's a pretty nominal price to do it. It's just labor to, yeah. to convert the new software. Sounds good. Looks so, like there, so, yeah, so yeah. that should probably wrap it up. Good. Um, well, thank you for coming all the way out to Lincoln for this. Uh, hopefully, yeah, we got no everything problem. out there. We had a lot of questions here, and again, we'll get back to everybody on the on the questions. John, thanks for coming up from Wichita, and he's going to head home. And for everybody else, thanks again for tuning in. Uh, a few people have asked if this is going to be available, and uh, Eric, it comes out. <clears throat> they'll get like a, an email with a link to this, correct? Yeah, we'll send everyone a link to the replay. Okay, so yeah, you will be able to, to replay this over and over because I know you want to hear our voice so much. Uh, but again, thanks for tuning in and uh, keep in tune with everything. We're going to be doing many more webinars uh, on avionics systems and many other things coming out from Duncan Aviation, and we will talk to you all soon. Yes, thank you, everyone. Thank you.